Welcome to the School of Wedding Photography. I'm here with the Scobies, Graham and Ashley, a husband and wife team based in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Graham and Ashley are 30 Rising Stars Wedding Photography by Rangefinder, Junebug's Best of the Best, PDN Top Knots, and Show It's Image of the Year. Welcome. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Uh, tell me about the North Star. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's important. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to dive right yeah. into the North Star. I love that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, we, why don't I, why don't I explain what the North star is through, through the story of how we found ours. Um, we started our business back in, uh, 2008 and we just moved from Los Angeles to, uh, to Connecticut. Ashley was pursuing, um, a a graduate degree, um, Mm -hmm. from UConn. And previous to that, I had been working in the audio uh, post-production industry in Los Angeles, so something totally different. Um, And we landed in Connecticut, and we were both in this kind of time of figuring out what we wanted to be when we grew up. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided that we were going to start a photography business um, because photography was something that we loved. To back up even a little bit further, Ash and I grew up together, and we shared this hobby of photography. So we're like, great, let's make a business out of a hobby. Um, And so we didn't really know what we were doing. And we put up a really crappy website and we started photographing any anything and everything that we could. Um, and we got about six months into that business uh, and we felt totally, um, uh, what's the word? Burnt out. Yeah. Lost. Like yeah. We, yeah, totally <laughs> lost and confused about it too because yeah. we would, a typical week would be like Monday we'd be shooting port, like pictures for a real estate agent that we knew and needed pictures of a house that they were selling and we would have like our neighbor's pet portraits on a Wednesday and then we'd be doing like random landscape or headshot photography and we like were super confused because we thought that we just loved photography and really what we kind of in a very roundabout way learned is that the act of clicking a shutter has does nothing for us like gives us no sense of satisfaction whatsoever. Um, really good pitch as a uh, photographer to tell we people hate that. <laughs> <laughs> but we were just trying to figure out like, okay, well, we really thought this was going to be the thing and it's not the thing. So what the hell is the thing? Yeah. Uh-huh. And we, we kind of realized that we had done all this work on trying to figure out like what we wanted our brand colors to be yeah. and like what we, you know, we, all, all this time on what we wanted to be, you know, we wanted to be photographers mm-hmm. and we had spent no time at all on the stuff of life, who we were, what we believed in, mm-hmm. what we valued, who we wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and so what age were you at this point? We were young. We were 20, 24 and 25. Okay. Like Not that. even right. Yeah. Something like 24 and 23. Yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's, maybe, I don't know, maybe we were behind, maybe that's natural for that like kind of stage of life, but we just hadn't really done the heavy work of like figuring out who we were. And Mm -hmm. so, um, we pushed the pause button on our business and, um, I got a job working at a photography studio, basically just like cleaning up files and maintaining computers and doing a little bit of editing. And, uh, Ashley was teaching, um, at the school she was getting her, her graduate degree from. And, we would come home at night <clears throat> and we would just have these conversations of like, uh, what's important to us? What do we believe in? What do we value? Um, and, um, through the course of doing that work, we realized that, um, uh, there were three themes that kept emerging three, three, three things that we could kind of build anything on if we could kind of get those things right. And those were that, um, we love people. We believe that people are good. And we think that if we did nothing but invest in people for the rest of our lives, that that would be a life well spent. Uh, number two is relationships are fascinating to us. Ashley was studying relationships in, in grad school. And, um, we've had, we Ashley and I met when we were in middle school. So we've had this really unique, weird relationship. Um, growing up and that's been a really cool thing for us and we've been surrounded by people that um, we've had really good relationships with so um, that was just kind of a natural for us we think that people were made to be in relationship um, Mm -hmm. that we function better in relationship than we do outside of it Uh, and so we said okay we love people we value relationships and around the same time we were having these conversations we found out that Ashley was pregnant with Mm -hmm. our first little one Mm -hmm. Um, which we were not planning on, <laughs> but <laughs> surprise. Um, and we realized really quickly, um, you know, ha- not having done the, uh, the 
preparation work of becoming parents that the, the cl- cliche of, you know, it all goes by so quickly and they grow up so fast is really is cliche because it's true. 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 Yeah. Um, and there were all of these moments that were flying by that we just wanted to stop and celebrate. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we had the. Yeah, that was like our aha moment yeah. where we just realized that like as photographers, the thing that did it for us, the thing that we loved about clicking a shutter was that you could almost reach into time and and pick these moments out that otherwise would just go by and be gone forever. And you had this powerful ability, if you did your job right, to say, you know, not that one, that one stays. Mm. I'm gonna choose to keep that one and relive it over and over again. And so we kind of, those were the things. And yeah. so we kind of took those things and tried to communicate it as best we could on our very crappy website <laughs> um, and you know kind of put that out into the world and couples started contacting us and we would do um, I guess our first our first like human shoot <laughs> with like or like couple shoot was a couple that had been married for like 10 years and they wanted an anniversary shoot and so um, they were like this is what we're looking for this is exactly what we've been wanting to just, find just based on the little blurb that we wrote about like yeah. why these things are important to us yeah because our work was definitely not all they were yeah. looking for <laughs> <laughs> it was not great but we we realized in that moment or kind of like in that season that um we could we could create a business uh and i don't i don't know that we understood fully how powerful this was going to be for us but um we could create a business around those three things and just use those three things as our North star. So every decision that we made within our business went back to what honors people in this situation, um, what honors relationship, how can we celebrate moments? Um, and so, you know, from the very, the, the relatively obvious, uh, parts of our job, like what we look for when we shoot and, um, kind of our style and, and that kind of thing all the way through to like, what do we do when we have a, a client who's upset with us for some reason? Mm-hmm. Or what, how do we, uh, what, what, how do we treat other vendors when we're working with them? Mm-hmm. Um, Even what our red flags look like, go yeah. back to our North star. You know, if there are things that people say like that, they just, they really want everything to be perfect and pretty and, and, you know, go off without a hitch. Very or, little emphasis on relationship. When yeah. We're meeting or with moments. Them. Yeah. yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. what we have, offer and what we're passionate about doesn't align with what you're looking for and what's important to you. Yeah. And we kind of came up with a North star to avoid burnout. We came up with it because we had figured that we were doing something wrong because we were doing things that kind of weren't, weren't feeling purposeful for us. And so we sort of backed into that. And what we've found over the past 10 years is that your North star is everything in terms of finding clients that really resonate with what you're doing because as photographers our work like our what the what of what we do is extremely tangible Mm. it's something that there are a ton of us that are real good at what we're doing trying (laughs) to get better putting it out there in a sea full of other people who are also doing the exact same thing or at least some very close iteration of that thing you know mountains flowing hair all the stuff and our why is always going to be more of a magnet for people than our what like your what may get them in the door but the why gets them to sign on the dotted line Mm -hmm. every time um and so the more clear you are about that and the more often you communicate it whatever it is i mean your why could be like i grew up loving horses and so i'm an equestrian photographer you know in the hills of virginia like whatever that is for you that gives you purpose that helps you feel you know, connected to the work that you're doing, talk about it as often as you can, because the people who don't resonate with that, all the better. And the people that do will really, really connect to you through it. So do you do you expressly talk about it? Or is it just sort of the ethos that you live by? Yeah, so it's like plastered everywhere that people could ever find us. So mm-hmm. like, if we ever on our website, there's, I mean, we break these things down in detail and talk about them. Mm-hmm. It's that to us is more important. Like we want, we want our couples when they uh, find us, we want them to see our work, but we figure that they probably already have in some format. Like yeah. they've seen us on Instagram or they've seen, um, you know, a photo on a uh, advertisement or, you know, there's something that's already bringing them there. And so like when they land at our site, the first thing we want them to know is this is who we are and this is what we bring to the table and this is what we believe in and this is what we're going to do for you if that's 
what you're looking for. Yeah, first thing we um, talk about in meetings. Yeah, it's the first thing we talk about in meetings. In fact, we, we sit down with people uh, and we start a meeting by getting to know them and hearing their story. And then the first thing that we say when we kind of transition into like our pitch is um, the whole reason we wanted to sit down and meet with you guys is just to make sure that we're a good fit, that what we do and what we believe in resonates with you. Um, because if it doesn't, there's another photographer out there that that you're going to resonate with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know some photographers would feel a little bit hesitant about saying those things, but it, it immediately puts our couples at ease that like, okay, we're on, we can we can kind of figure this out together. Yes. Yeah. It's not just a sales pitch. They, they've got my interests in heart. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. 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 So how much of this uh, North star philosophy has uh, sort of crept into your personal life? I'm guessing. Yeah. I think our personal life informed the philosophy, probably yeah. the other way around, I think, you know, but those are the things that definitely just as human beings, aside from photography are, the most important things in our lives yeah. are the little, the people and the relationships and the moments. Yeah. And it's not to say that we're like, um, that we do these things perfectly or that we honor, we always honor like people in, in our, uh, you know, the way that we should, but it's, those are the kind of aspirational, like the, if we could be the perfect versions of ourselves, mm-hmm. we think that, that it would look something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like Ashley said, it's, it's everything to us. It's, uh, not only like the, it's not only the, the North Star for our business, but it's the North Star for uh, every interaction that we have. Totally. And even, you know, when we're 80 and we're not photographers anymore and we're rocking on our front porch, those will still be the things that are important to us long after photography is not what we do for a living anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, do you shoot uh, together? Shoot Sometimes. weddings together? Yeah. We, we started out shooting everything together. Yeah. Um, and over the years, as our, our kids have gotten older and um, we've both gotten a little bit more confident in the, in the areas of shooting that were weaknesses for us, um, we've uh, started shooting more separately. So yeah. now we're to a point where it's about um, probably about 75% of the time we're working um, uh, independently of each other. Okay. Okay. And how do you find sort of balancing business and being parents and being partners? Yeah, we're the worst at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, Ashley always, uh, to speak for you, and you can correct me if okay, I'm wrong, but she she sometimes cringes at the word balance because, uh, <laughs> I, as you know, like as a as an entrepreneur and, um, uh, you know, a, a photographer, your your life is, it, it's not, it's not tidy little box. Maybe it is for you. Maybe it is for some people, but for us, everything just runs over into the other thing. And it's so seasonal. The work that we do, you know, like right now we're sitting in a month where we're coming out of a season of shooting multiple times a week for the past four months and going into a season where I'm looking at a calendar where I'm going to get to spend almost every single day the way that I want to with my family. And so the idea in about that, six to eight weeks <laughs> yeah, yeah, after October, uh, <laughs> you know, there is a, there's an idea with balance that like there are scales and that if you put three rocks on the family scale, you have to put three rocks on the financial scale or the business scale. And it just doesn't, it feels like, um, and, and maybe specifically from, a mother's perspective. We also have made the decision three years ago to homeschool our kids because we're crazy. And so it all just is, I mean, it is super integrated. There's no, there's no taking it apart, you know, to the point that when we shoot destination weddings, our kids go with us because it's an educational opportunity for them. And so, yeah. Or, you know, sometimes homeschool looks like Abby sitting next to me while I edit and us talking about logic and me explaining what I'm doing, you know, while I'm editing. And sometimes, uh, like Ashley said, work looks like bringing our kids along. It's yeah. just, everything is very, Meshed, yeah. so it, yeah, that the idea of balance is one that we've kind of given up on, mm-hmm. uh, in favor of more of a, um, a more of a, like a, a oneness and a completeness and understanding that, you know, if we, um, if we're deficient in one thing in this season, we we can 
we can pull that back and bring it back into the fold in the next season. Kind yeah. Of. And I, I will say too, you know, as far as that goes, cause I think the question that people really want to know when they ask, you know, how do you balance everything is like, how do you give everything proper attention? How yeah. do you not fail at everything that you're doing? Um, and the, I think the answer is that we fail a lot, but also like we know what wolf to feed when, you know, like what's that old, Speaking of children, are there yellow eyes? Are there- <laughs> They're not my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The story about the wolf. Tell the story about the wolf. The story about the wolf. There's, uh, I don't know if this will be useful or not, but there's the there's a uh, like a Cherokee proverb. Um, it's this old grandfather talking to, uh, I think it's his son. Let's just say it's his son, and um, you know his son has had a, a hard day and. Um, he's trying to figure out how to react to that hard day. And the grandfather's telling this story about how, um, you know, uh, there are two wolves inside of my soul. You know, there are two wolves that are constantly battling each other. And one is good and wholesome and um, does the right thing and, and treats, uh, you know, others with love. And the other is um, anger and resentment and, um uh, you know, these, these bad qualities, these kind of, um, you know, less ideal qualities, I guess. And, you know, the, the grandson says, well, which wolf wins? And he says, it's the wolf that I feed. Um, and so, yeah, I think to, to apply that to what we were talking about, you want to jump back in on that? Minimal blood. (laughs) (laughs) We're all good. Um, but yeah, we know, we there are things we commit to and we commit to them pretty well and then there are things that we just fly by the seat of our pants on you know we know that if things feel off kilter with our relationship that if it's just kind of hard that we need to commit to more date nights if it's really hard we need to commit to marriage counseling you know like we gotta, are the first people feed those wolves. yeah gotta feed the good wolves <laughs> yeah totally we're the first people to be i guess honest about the stuff that we're sucking at in the moment and trying to just sort of figure out a way to do it better. Mm. Yeah. And so is that a communication sort of that you regularly have, or is it just as it's happening, you, you talk to each other? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. We try and do, um, as a family, uh, we have, uh, they, they have up to this point been Monday morning meetings, which we've realized is not working very well because none of us are morning people. And they start <laughs> just time. Yeah. Uh, so we're transitioning those into Sunday night meetings, but um, we sit down as a family with, you know, our four-year-old and our nine-year-old and us, and uh, we talk about like, uh, here's what's going on in our life. Here's what last week looked like. Is there anything that we needed to change about that? Is there anything that we could have done better? Um, here's what this week is going to look like. And we talk to our kids. We say, hey, we've got you know three weddings to edit, so that means dad is going to be in the office a lot this week, uh, which means we're going to have to adjust in this way. Um, you know, and it's me and Ashley's chance to catch up on a lot of this stuff too, because mm-hmm. even though we work together and we parent together, a lot of times we are uh, dividing and conquering. <laughs> We're working yeah. on different. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there's like some formality to the way that we've tried to communicate these things um, and on a regular basis. Uh, and then there are times where it's just like, it's, it's a Wednesday and it's obvious that something is off kilter and yeah. we need to address it, mm-hmm. um, which usually happens after the kids are in bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yelling, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost my fault. <laughs> 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 no, just saying, we just actually yell. We don't miss Um, now, I know you've moved uh, across the country a couple of times. How has that sort of experience been business-wise? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, on this side of it, I feel like every time we've moved, our business has gotten better because here's my theory on this. I think if we moved a couple more times, I could test the theory, but I don't think we're going to. <laughs> um, I think that what happens is in any business where you hit a point where you feel like pretty stable, pretty accomplished. You're coasting. You coast. It's really easy just to kind of check out, put things on autopilot and get a little prideful um, about how well you're doing. And when you move markets, you don't have a chance to do that. It's a hustle. You're the new kid 
you're starting from the bottom every single time. And it's a really good reminder about so many things, um, about how hard it is to keep a business going and about what it takes to just like create form relationships that will help sustain your business. And I mean, every time we've moved, we've dropped our prices. So we have no attachment to the whole, like, if my prices are high, then that makes me a better photographer yeah. thing. Yeah. I think, um, to echo what Ashley's saying, it really like, uh, moving is a good chance to it's, well, it's not a chance. It's you're, you're required yeah. to reevaluate what you're doing and whether it is, um, universally appealing or whether you've just kind of got, you, you have a lot of good people surrounding you. Like in, in Atlanta, um, it got to a point, let's see. Yeah. We were in Atlanta for the longest period of time that we've been in any market and five years, five years. And we got to a point in Atlanta where, um, six years, sorry, mm -hmm. six years. And we got to a point in Atlanta where we, uh, we were on autopilot because, and, and we thought like, oh, we're just amazing. And we have like this, this like worldwide appeal and like, uh, you know, our work is just great and everybody's going to love it everywhere. And what was really happening behind the scenes was that we had formed relation, really valuable relationships with other photographers and with, uh, vendors in the industry and with our past couples and clients. And, um, you know, we had done hard work on the front end to get all this thing going and then that was sustaining it like it was those people that were sustaining us it wasn't anything that we were doing it was just like we had the luck of being surrounded by some really amazing people um and so when you take that away uh then it's uh it's a mandatory check-in like wh why why isn't our phone ringing mm -hmm. well it's probably because we haven't done the hard work yeah. to make our phone ring yeah you have to work for your lunch again yeah mm. yeah mm. Um, I remember reading something you read online about this. I think you said it was the um, brass tacks of, of getting starting as a photographer. And you said, I think you outlined a couple of things. One of them was relationship with vendors. Um, do you remember this interview? I'm struggling to remember the other points now. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> yeah, I think, was it potentially, okay, so definitely relationships with other vendors. Our number one source of leads in any market we've ever been in has been other planners, caterers, photographers, venues, like so grateful for those people. Um, and then referrals. Yeah. Creating that, um, uh, sticky brand, I guess it's not, not in the sense that like my logo is awesome and people love it, but like in the sense that, uh, you give your customers an experience that they can't not talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, everybody has an idea of what working with a wedding photographer is going to be like. Everybody has an idea of what going to a, a fast food restaurant is going to be like. But if you can change that um, for people and you can make it, you can exceed their expectations at every level, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if you, it, it's like when people, I don't know, are you familiar with In-N-Out Burger in the, <laughs> in the States? No. <laughs> Okay, well, it's this, it's like a West Coast burger place. Yeah. And okay. there's really nothing special about it. It's just a, I mean, good burgers, if you like burgers and fries and um, shakes, good food. Yeah. Um, it's just another burger place, really. But yeah. people from the East Coast, the first thing that they do when they land in California is they go to In N Out Burger because they've made this experience of food um, different and uh, uh, memorable and people talk about it. And so that's what people crave, you know, when they don't have it yeah. and they'll go out way to get it. You know, yeah. you want to be the in and out burger in a sea of McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger Kings. Yeah, totally. Um, so how do you, I mean, how do you be the in and out burger in the wedding yeah. photography industry? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to use that analogy and I haven't ever done this before, so we may just fall on our face. <laughs> and try to pursue this. Let's walk it out. But I love it. I love it. it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, in and out burger, they start with a good product. Like they have, you know, they make their, their food fresh, uh, which is different. Better than normal product. Yeah. 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 Um, they're, they're so yeah, I, you know, we, we talk about marketing a lot. And one of the first things that we, that we tell people when we're talking about marketing is like, don't get, don't ca get caught in the hype of like, if I build a great brand, you know, my colors are right. People will come. Like it starts with, knowing your craft and, and doing what you do as best as you can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, 
good product to begin with, but then creating an experience around that product that's different than everybody else. So, um, you know, if, uh, for, for us, like, uh, when our, when, when we meet with our clients, um, there, there are kind of industry standards around, um, uh, you know, this market that, you know, people would come into like a studio studio and you'd have like your, your photos hanging behind them. Your and you, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And you'd have like, you know, books that you were showing people. I see you, Ashley. All right. It's all right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We, we, um, partially because it's just who we are and we love it, but like we, we take people to breweries. We love beer and we, we buy people beer and we, um, you know, or we, we ask them before we meet, like, are you a beer person? Do you like wine? You want to grab coffee? Um, and then we figure out like, what's the place, you know, like that has, something that that's different you know if um there's this really great brewery just down the street from us called cannonball creek and it's like it's phenomenal it's just a really great brewery and it's this great vibe and totally different so we we take them there and we like have an experience with our with our couples just from the start that's even like before people book us we just we want to start it out on a on a good note and then within that meeting like we've already kind of talked about how we approach like a um I don't even like the word pitch, but we approach like the sales process in a different way. Um, just by saying like, what's important to us and what we're concerned with is that you find the right photographer. Um, so that's where it starts. And then once people book, um, we have, uh, different things that we, different touch points that we do with couples along the way, um, to just, uh, kind of get them excited and remind them that like, we're in your corner, um, yeah. close to, close to the wedding date, we send a little date night kit and we say like, it's stressful right now. We get that, you know, planning a wedding at this point in the game is stressful. Um, so have a date night on us. Um, you know, we, in different seasons, we've had different things that we've sent to people, um, you know, that, that were appropriate for that season that we, you know, totally. And it all extends from kind of who we are as people. So it helps them throughout the process. You know, we're showing, that we're caring for our clients, but also they're getting to know us a little bit better, even through that experience. Cause we believe in date night. Like we try to do date nights, even when we're mad at each other, you know? So even if it means that we're like staring at each other angrily over ice melting in a water glass, like we're going to show up and do date night because chances are it will help whatever argument we have come to a close a lot quicker. And, and then, so, yeah, so we do date yeah. night boxes or whatever and then on the wedding day like we try and be um we try and be advocates of calm and mindfulness and and like being present on their wedding day so anytime we're interacting with our couple and we see like stress creeping in either verbally usually verbally we try and remind people that like what's important is is not that your flowers are 30 minutes late or that your hair isn't exactly the way that you want it. Like what's important is that you're standing here with the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And when we, when we, um, when we create portraits of our couples, we start with just breathing. We just let them breathe together and we back off and we, uh, we tell them like, this is the only time you're going to get to spend together alone on your wedding day, which is a weird thing. It's a weird, uh, to us, that's, you know, kind of a strange thing about the wedding industry is that, wedding days aren't really for, the yeah. yeah um yeah and then uh we leave them uh you know one thing that's been huge for us it's this stupid little thing that costs us ten dollars a wedding is we have a little instax printer and during dinner if we have time to sit down we go through our photos and we pick 10 photos that tell the story of their day you know just 10 of our favorites uh, we do a quick little iPhone edit on them and we print them out on square in stacks and we wrap that in a little gold, like a little pretty ribbon mm-hmm. and we sit it on their table or we hand it to them at some point of the night. And, um, the, the cool thing about that, like for us, the, the motivation behind that was let's make this a good experience for people and let's let them take something tangible away. The marketing value that we've seen in that, like we've, we, we've booked weddings um, multiple weddings from the bridesmaid that the bride was gushing about our little Instax photo. And not the overexposed. It yeah. drives me crazy. Ashley's like, this isn't how the photos are going to be when we give them to you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm like, this isn't what it looks like. This is not, we do not edit these. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I mean, and anybody can do that, right? Those are just the things that we've uh, figured out. And these aren't novel ideas either. Mm -hmm. Other people have been doing similar mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's for us, it, it came back to like examining our entire process and including moments of delight for people. I can't remember who's, that was in some marketing book that I read at some point. Do you? Yeah, I, that concept's familiar to me as well, but I can't think where from. I feel like it was a TED Talk, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's where yeah. I, I got it. But yeah, these little these little moments of delight where uh, like Mailchimp is a great example. If you've ever used Mailchimp to send an email, when you go to send the email, there's like a, there's like a, a little monkey hand and a big red button, and it's like, are you yeah, ready yeah. to? Send? <laughs> like, it hits the, and there's this like it's a stupid little thing, but you're like, this is that was so amazing. That was cool. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you remember? Oh yeah, Mailchimp. They have a great experience when I even when I send uh, emails, that's like a fun thing. Yeah. So yeah. and I think just the to tack on to that, just kind of creating a client experience and setting yourself apart, the very easiest thing and the thing that for some reason people have the hardest time with is just being a nice person. <laughs> like just, just treat love people well, people well yeah. throughout. Yeah. Don't complain about your clients. Be grateful for the fact that you get to do creative work and have it pay your bills and just treat people well. Every single turn in disagreements and when it's easy, all the way through to the vendors at your wedding. I mean, I think that's why it's so easy for us to make really solid vendor relationships is because we show up and we truly believe that we're there as a part of a team to make that day as easy as possible for everyone involved. Like we, we want to work well with everybody that we can. Um, and some people are just jerks. Yeah. A great example of this. So we, uh, I, I was shooting a, a wedding up in Vail um, on a golf course and, uh, it was raining right before the ceremony and everybody was stressed out obviously because it was going to be this out outdoor ceremony. All the chairs are already set up. Everything's beautiful. And then it just, in Colorado, we get these freak storms that just come out of nowhere and storm passed. It's like five running about five minutes late and the staff, the, they're kind of short staffed. And so the staff is out there trying to wipe down the, the chairs and the minister who's being paid, he's just the paid officiant. He goes and grabs a towel and starts wiping down the, the chairs. Um, and so, you know, that's not a, that's not a huge thing for him to do. Like he, um, it is something that he didn't have to do for sure. Mm. But that venue and that staff and that team is now going to remember like the next time somebody asks for a referral, uh, you know, for a, an officiant, they're going to refer him because the other part I didn't say was he did a really great job at the way his product was good, yeah. Yeah. but then he just showed up for other people. Yeah, and he's a good he, person too. Yeah. 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 There's no room in this industry or in this job for ego. Like there's no reason, there's no space for it. Just show up and do your job well and be a nice human. Um, yeah, I think there's, there are a lot of, there is a lot of, ego in this industry and sometimes I just want to shake people and be like you're a wedding photographer <laughs> like, it's important it's important work but like also you're not let's... curing cancer <laughs> you're not building rocket ships like you're awesome I believe in you go do it but like even if you're the best wedding photographer that has ever walked this earth yeah, yeah. I, as someone I spoke to the other day said that uh, there there will never be a street named after a wedding photographer, and we need to keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true, and uh, yeah. and you you see that exemplified in the industry too. It's not it, it, not everybody is in one camp or the other. No. You know, there are the um, the fairs of the world that were are you, super humble. People. Were you uh, sort of working in weddings before sort of social media came along? I think it was right as it started to really ramp up. I okay. think we we had a Facebook page, Facebook fan page, when we first started, and that was Twitter as well. And those mm -hmm. were the only two forms of social media that we were using. Instagram hadn't really hit yet. It was mm -hmm. a thing, but it hadn't really. Not until we moved to Atlanta did it feel like something that was necessary from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I guess I'm wondering now if so if everyone's got good products um, do you think that your uh, and obviously you've got a great product but do you think your um, the client experience has sort of set you apart has really made a key difference I think client experience is part of it 
I think that, um, honestly, I mean, in my opinion, I think that just connecting with people and treating people well is the number one thing. I think another thing, and I guess this could be considered a part of the client experience is just treating our business like a business. So being responsive, like it's amazing the number of people who are like, I can't book weddings, but I only answer emails once a week. You know, it's like, you can't really, like you don't get to have both. Um, and so you kind of, you know, you want to be responsive and you want to answer people and, and be available to people as much as you possibly can. goes back to treating people well, though. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, to, to answer your question in a, a succinct way, I think mm-hmm. client, for us, um, this, the success that we've had, which to us just looks like being able to like feed our family and do this full time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we're not claiming any, anything beyond that, (laughs) but the success that we've had has been because, um, we treated people well and we, we gave them a good experience. Um, whether that was a client or somebody else that we touched along the the way. You touching people? No, my bad. (laughs) Sunday night meeting is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Going on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, am I right in thinking you used to have your own podcast? Or well, do you still have? No. Well, I um, I hosted the Shoe Proof podcast. Uh, so for, um, I think, about a year we did the uh, the shoe proof podcast, which was a lot of fun, and we got to talk to some really cool people mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and that explains why you have that microphone that you're using. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just because Graham's, Graham's an audio nerd because that's what he did before life as a wedding yeah. photographer. Uh, okay, okay, we might need to talk later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of interested in the idea of success as a wedding photographer and um, and what I'm interested in is not the typical idea of what success is. And I want to know what you think it means to have made it as a wedding photographer. Wow. I'll take a stab at that and then you can, yeah. you can give the right answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, for us, um, man, oh, it's shifted. It's really such a moving target. Yeah, it's been it's been something very different for the majority of our career, and it has grown into to something that I consider a little bit more healthy. Um, but I remember, you know, just just to be like fully transparent and tell you where we came from. Like when we started in wedding photography, we didn't have our own goals. So like even, even after we came up with kind of our North star and what we loved and like how we wanted to connect with our clients and the experience we wanted to give them, um, we didn't really know how to set goals around our business. So we just kind of looked around to see what other people were doing and we're like, Oh, they made, you know, they have a six figure, uh, wedding photography business. That should be our goal is to hit that, you know, six figure mark. And then we looked over here and this person had just won an award and from a competition, we're like, okay, we need to, we need to get that award to be successful. And then we saw our friends speaking at conferences and we're like, I guess we need to like, we need to speak at WPPI or we're not successful. Um, and man, that ran us into the ground, uh, both like from a work perspective and just emotionally, (laughs) because when you, um, when you set yourself up to, uh, uh, to follow somebody else's dream. Like you're never, you're never going to connect with your own and it's just going to feel empty. Like I remember we, we hit some of those goals that we set out to, to hit. Um, in fact, one of the, one of our goals was to, uh, was to make the, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember this. Um, I think it was American photo used mm-hmm. to have like pop photo, yeah. pop photo had a top 10 wedding okay. photographers in yeah. the world. And that was, that was our goal was we wanted to get that. And then I think the year after we set that as a goal or maybe a couple of years after they discontinued that, they like stopped doing mm-hmm. it and we're like, well, great. <laughs> like, we're just Wait, never going to yeah. be successful. What about my dreams? <laughs> yeah. And then Rangefinder came around and they were like, we do this, you know, 30 rising stars. Yeah. And we're like, oh, that would be cool. And, yeah. um, we, we actually, you know, got that one year, um, somebody nominated us. Uh, I think the girls at Junebug no- nominated us and, um, for some reason they, they chose us. And I remember, 
getting that magazine and flipping through and being like, we don't, we don't deserve this. We don't belong here. We're, oh, this isn't yeah. like, uh, and like, it's like, what's next? Yeah. It, there wasn't any, like I, I was expecting confetti cannons and a parade and Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift to show up at our door and <laughs> congratulate us. She did not And, and, uh, yeah, it just felt empty. It was like, okay, well, I guess I need a new goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, so I want to preface that by saying, I know that that can sound really s- s- snotty and snobbish, like that that wasn't an exciting thing for us. Um, it was exciting. It was exciting yeah. in, so- in some ways, but really what we realized was like... Nothing changes. Yeah, it doesn't like... The, what, what we ended up realizing through that process was that like, we've made it when we have um, when we have family dinners together. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like we've made it when we we can get a notification that we booked a wedding and it's a couple that we really are excited about working with, and that that deposit will go towards putting food on the table and maybe taking our kids on a road trip. You know, like for us, if we can um, if we can work with people that resonate with what we do and we can breathe into them and give them like give them that piece of us that we're saying like, this is what we believe in and this is what we want to do for you. We can do that and we can make money and we can pay our bills. Like that is as, that is as successful as I think we, as we could be. be. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think, um, I think my answer is really similar to yours in that to me, success is running a business that gives you business success is running a business that gives you the freedom to make decisions as a family and as a person that are best for the people who matter most to you. So, you know, three years ago, we, not even three years ago, because of our business and because of the flexibility that we had, we were able to say, if we want, if we could live anywhere, where would we live? And we were able to decide to move to Colorado as a family and make that work irrespective of, you know, like where we needed to be because of where we wanted to be. And that move has allowed us to slow down a lot as a family. The pace of life is a lot slower. We're not shooting nearly as much. The times that we are shooting, you know, we're hiking up into the mountains and being in nature and going camping a lot and taking road trips. And yeah, it's, it, we've gotten to be smaller in a lot of ways. And that, the freedom to be smaller feels like success to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I read something else online that you wrote about, um, or maybe it was a podcast interview about um, abundance mindset. And you've mentioned um, mindfulness before. I'm wondering how much that sort of is part of your life. Yeah. um, We're very different. (laughs) Different ways. Yeah. Um, for me, I'll speak for me, um, that it, (laughs) um, it's a very central idea to everything that I do. So, um, not again, not that I'm perfect at it and not that I'm, you know, there are seasons where I I am a mindfulness practitioner (laughs) where I meditate and Evie and I, what part of her homeschooling is a mindfulness class. So every week, Mm -hmm. at least once a week, we'll sit down and we'll talk about mindfulness and we'll meditate together and we'll, um, kind of, you know, discover together the benefits of, uh, of being mindful. Um, the, so, uh, you know, in, in some seasons, especially, uh, it's the opposite of the, of what it should be. Like when I'm really busy, I kind of forget to do those things Mm -hmm. and that's when I need it the most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's very central. And then the, the abundance mindset is something that, um, it's something that we believe in and is something that's aspirational mm-hmm. for, for both of us. Uh, I think it's, I think I, I only know maybe a couple of people who live there who are just like, life is a gift and every day is uh, a miracle and we can do all these things. You know, have, have all this it's it's just BBC News. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're texting me notes. Oh, thanks. Hello. Okay, so shift and question mark like this. It's a, a little, shift, little typing lesson. Shift here. and a question mark. 
you have to hit the That's shift key at the same time. At the same time? As that one. And that'll do a question mark. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thanks, sister. She's learning to type. She's she's writing a story. Ah, um, nice. <laughs> you don't have to do a question mark yet. Yeah. yeah. Figure <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I, uh, I only know a few people who have that like uh, abundance mindset all the time, or it seems like they do. Um, for us, it, it's a good reminder. And to explain that concept a little bit, um, you know, you can live a life of, uh, of never believing that there's enough. There's not enough clients, uh, in my market. You know, we, the, the one thing that we hear all the time when we're mentoring, Oversaturated. yes, yeah. when we're mentoring photographers or we're, we're, um, speaking, it, you know, we, we get to talk to people is how do you, you know, how do you do this in a, in a saturated market? And we tell everyone like every, everybody's market is saturated. Like we all think that we live in a bad place to be a wedding photographer. Um, so believing in enoughness that there are enough clients to go around. And instead of worrying about the ones that you're not getting, let's focus on what clients we can connect with. What do we do uh, that's different than other, other people? And what, what do we believe that's different than other people? And how can we connect with, with the right clients in that way? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, the most important, kind of facet of abundance and, you know, mindset versus scarcity mindset is the way you participate in community. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of people who have a hard time because I'm the first person to be like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. You know, <laughs> like the tangibles. Um, I can, I can definitely give into scarcity, but I also think that something that's been really helpful for us in our business in terms of, um, uh, feeling like confident in our business and in who we are as people is just cheering other people on. Um, I think that there's a little bit of like, sometimes I joke that there's like a 13 year old in all of us, you know, just walking into the middle school lunchroom, just like hoping that somebody will invite us to sit at their table. Um, and as adults, we kind of get to live in this really cool reality that there is no cool kids table that like you're the cool kid, like you are the one. So your goal should be to invite as many people to sit with you as you possibly can in the time that you're given. Um, and when you choose to do that, you notice that like all of a sudden there's no outside. There's just us and our community and your relationships get closer and you get to really cheer people on in a way that just screams abundance versus that scarcity of like, well, they're winning, so that means that I can't win. So yeah. that's just not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably did die. Do you need to go? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you um, how do you keep developing as a photographer? How do you keep sort of seeing new things and finding new ways to be inspired? Yeah. <clears throat> one one thing that um, one thing that I was taught at, at that studio that I was working at um, when we were figuring out who we wanted to be when we grew up was a uh, uh, phenomenal photographer out of Connecticut. Her name is Carla Tenike. She's uh, the best. She, she's a great photographer. She's really, really, really great photographer. She's also a great human mm -hmm. being um, and just loves people loud. Like that's, the, <laughs> that's how I describe her. But mm -hmm. um, she, when I started like assisting her in second shooting for her, she would give me a, a project at, at every wedding. So we would go through our images from the last wedding and she'd be like, you, you've got verticalitis. Like you need to stop taking photos in a vertical frame and you need to like this, your project for this wedding is just to shoot horizontal images and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I felt like through that process, I grew a ton in my early days. And so we, we try and do that, especially around this time of year when, um, for, in our market, uh, we've been, we've been well into our busy season. Like we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and it's easy to just become complacent and kind of do the same thing that you do every week. Um, so we like to give each other challenges or give ourselves challenges of like, you know, for noticing something that we could improve on, like, uh, you know, why don't you try this time when you're when you're creating portraits put a, a 50 on and get real close and just spend time there because that's something that you haven't done mm -hmm. for a while mm -hmm. uh, and so i think it's important it's important to self-assess 
I think the danger in self-assessment for someone like me is that it becomes very, it becomes very negative very quickly. <laughs> and then I'm just like, I, my work sucks and I, I hate everything about it and I don't know where to, you know, but to go to look at stuff and say, you know, I really like this and how it's working, but I've done that and, uh, I would like to try something else. So I'm going to leave the comfortable space of this and I'm going to go outside of that and try something different. I mean, honestly, I could have just said it my part of that as be willing to fail, just like fall on your face as much as possible. I think <laughs> the photographers that we really admire, um, their, their work, they're failing all the time. Like they're, you know, they're making mistakes and that's why they're good. Right. <laughs> it's they're because trying. They're, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. I think you as a creative, it's important to feed yourself creatively in ways that fall outside of the realm of like what you do for a paycheck. So, you know, going to museums and mm-hmm. watching movies and going to the theater. Reading poetry. Totally. Like, yeah. yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And just kind of feeding your soul in ways that don't require you to pick up a camera necessarily. You know, I think personality differences totally play into this. But sometimes to me, picking up a camera just feels like work. It feels heavy. And so it's important for me to to feed myself creatively in a way that doesn't require doing work. Um, And so that's something that I really enjoy. And as a, as a piece of that too, there was one season where, uh, where we were feeling pretty burnout. We, I think we shot 47 weddings that year. It was back when we were shooting together, everything. And, um, we kind of like kind of hitting that plateau of creativity, just like, we, you know, our clients hired us for this work. So we're just going to do this work and that, you know, um, and Ashley bought me a Hasselblad, just an old, you know, medium format film camera and, uh, taking that, like getting outside of my process in that way. Like not that the, the answer is go buy new gear, but for me, shooting on medium format film and having to do everything manually and slowing way down made me, it just necessitated me doing things differently. Mm-hmm. And so that was, that was really helpful as well totally. to stay like creative. Yeah. I've seen a really cool resurgence of like 10 types, you know, photographers going out and just really doing just a, like totally different process of photography. And I feel like anything that requires your brain to just, think about things in a different way is going to inform your craft and help make you make you stretch a little bit creatively yeah yeah uh if you were starting again as wedding photographers what would you do differently everything (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say nothing (laughs) Well, then you better answer that separately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I say everything because uh, going back to some of our earlier discussion, the things that like we were focused on early on, whether that was like, um, you know, making a profitable business and not really worrying about the soul behind that business or um, setting goals based on like what everybody else is doing. Uh, like I wish... And I think a lot of this stuff is, these are lessons that you can only learn by, by doing. But if I could go back and talk to myself, you know, 10 years ago, um, those are the things, those are the mistakes, the pitfalls that I would try and share with them. Like you're, you're going to be tempted to want these things or to do things this way, but like, here's a better path. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And and that's that's your answer. And and nothing. I would say nothing. Cause I think if we had, if we had learned the lessons without going through the process somehow, we wouldn't be where we are right now, like physically. We wouldn't live in Colorado. (laughs) We wouldn't have the pace of life that we have. We definitely wouldn't be homeschooling our kids. I, it would be hard to see a world in which the path could have looked different and the destination be the same. Yeah. Uh, And I just feel really grateful for where we are and who we're working with and what our family life looks like and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to change. Um, I think if I could have, if I could have changed anything, I would have, I would have done social media differently. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a really unhealthy relationship with social media for a few years that just, 
there nothing good came out of it and i think um, just the, the comparison machine the comparison machine and just constantly feeling okay. yeah. so attuned to what everybody else is doing and i think if i could have i would have told myself like this is a business tool use it as a business tool post engage walk <laughs> away it yeah. has reflection on your value as a human being or your worth um and that that probably would have saved me a good amount Some pain. Of- yeah. yeah 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 okay that's that's interesting um what are you looking forward to do you want to answer or you want me to yeah we're going on a trip in the spring just for fun um our goal with our kiddos is to visit every national park before they go to college and so we have like a little national park sign and we like you know bubble in all the bubbles as we go and so some of our best friends who live in nashville who also homeschool their kiddos um we're planning a trip to go see the national park in hawaii in in march so i'm looking forward to that because i really like trips that don't require me to pack a camera (laughs) I'm uh, I'm also looking forward to those things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's something, so like from a work perspective, there's something that I'm uh, excited about. There's a personal project that I'm working, working on, have started to ideate on is maybe a better, a more accurate uh, way to say that, but um, that I'm really excited about. I don't think it's going to make us a dollar and I think it's going to cost me a lot of time, but uh it's something that um, is going to feed my soul, and I'm not trying to like vague book here, uh, but I, I heard somebody sure. recently say that like talking about things that you haven't already done is yeah. just wind. So, <laughs> soon, <laughs> but so you're I excited about it. I can talk, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and ski what, season. Oh man, ski season. Uh, of course, it being in Denver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if people want to follow you on social media, where are you? Um, we are at the Scobies on Instagram. That's basically that's it. about it. Yeah, okay. you can yeah. show up at our front door though, that's, and we'll cook you way. some taco soup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's no, our no Facebook. <laughs> we do have we do have a uh, a newsletter that people can sign up for mm-hmm. uh, if they want to, um, but that's basically that's it <laughs> yeah, okay. i think that's on our website there's an education um tab, tab that people can, can click on and get okay. more information about that and kind of stuff what's your website the okay and okay. that's s-c-o-b-e-y-s you'll yeah. probably put that put it up. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right graham and ashley thank you so much for your time today i really appreciate it thank, thank you, you so much it was good really to good meet to meet you. you take care bye-bye bye, bye.